accept this contribution and call on me to assist the campaign effort in any way. <laughs> well, Frank thought you'd like that. Oh. Well, is this man Overton very influential? Is he? Influential? Mm -hmm. Fritz Overton is a man. Well, how can I say it? His nickname is the governor. At the club, when they talk about Overton's territory, they mean half the state. He's got money, influence, connections, if he backs well, the Well, in that case, I might as well go ahead and have the mug inscribed. Well, you might say that uh, the risk is considerably smaller. <laughs> what mug? Oh, my gift to Frank. He gets it whether he wins or not. But I was waiting to have it inscribed. Ah, what the devil. Senator it is, in block letters, and I'll give it to him on election night. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Let's be a little bit careful. I mean, this is terrific, but let's not count our chickens. I mean, burn our bridges. What? I mean, two in the hand is worth three in the <laughs> This man, you may observe, has become very superstitious. Mm -hmm. Now, you observe him. Yesterday, he threw a pinch of salt on the beef, right. threw a handful over his shoulder, <laughs> and nearly blinded me. <laughs> Come on, that's all right. All I do is study maps of Washington, D.C. I got 14 different routes up to Capitol Hill. Maybe we're getting our hopes up a little bit. Yeah, Bobby, I know he's going to win. Every once in a while, I get this feeling, suppose he doesn't. And I get this feeling in the pit of my stomach, and like a cold sweat. It, I've never felt nothing like it since I've been in the ring. Well, well, how solid does it look? I mean, with these personal endorsements and group endorsements piling up, it, well, he'll win by a landslide, mm -hmm. won't he? Well, if the election were held today, absolutely. But something could still happen right. before November. Right. Such as? Such as a scandal. I mean, if something big and flashy, the media gets a hold of it, they run with it. That could hurt us. Yeah. You mean Edmund, huh? Yeah. But, but, but that, that problem is solved now that Gillian is married. No, not really. No. Well, then again, Jill doing that, actually marrying Seneca. I mean, it's like anything could happen. But John, will you stop borrowing trouble? Yeah, what are we worrying about? Look, Overton's endorsed Frank. He's going to win. Kevin, get that mug engraved. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, speaking of anything might happen. Hi! Oh, what I mean to say is, howdy. Uh... The role of Nancy Feldman is now being played by Nana Tucker. Is the boss in the office? With Mrs. Woodard. Good morning. I've missed you, dear. Oh, George, I'm sorry, but we just had this incredible scene with Ethel's landlord. <laughs> and as soon as we see Frank, I'll, I'll get out here and do whatever needs doing. I promise. Mrs. Green, I heard you speak at the Civic Council last year. I'm Georgia Rothschild. This is a pleasure. Oh, why, thank you, Miss Rothschild. Mm, how come Mr. Foote didn't say hello like that? <laughs> ah, any luck? Wait till you hear. Ethel, Ethel, I want you to meet my brother Frank. Oh, Councilman Ron, I'm so glad to meet you. Hi, I've had you on my mind since Nancy called. Come on in, the suspense oh. is killing me. Come on. You know, they never laid a glove on us. Oh, yeah, you gotta hear this. It was fascinating. Uh -huh. Mrs. Green, how nice. I've heard so much about your marvelous work with the school boards. Y you know me? Of course. I read the community schools bulletin. Well, well, I've read about you, too. I mean, well, uh, well, actually, uh, it's about time we met, because I've been throwing your name around all morning. And, uh... Wonderful. You uh, managed to corner your reluctant landlord. Well, the detectives over there did all the cornering. I, I just went along for the kill. Oh, who are you kidding? She was the kill. <laughs> she left Mr. Foote looking a lot like one of his plastic flowers. Oh, then House of Gar Garlands is legitimate, then? It's, uh, he really does manufacture flowers? <laughs> well, all I saw was a pot of fake geraniums, and I know he got them at the 5 and 10, because the principal at my school has the very same ones. <laughs> well, whatever he manufactures, he was not interested in discussing it this morning. <laughs> oh, well, not with us, anyway. No. Oh, come on, sit down, tell us about yeah. it. Yeah. I want to hear it. <coughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, if you came here to place an order, I'll have somebody to write it up. <laughs> but uh, if you came here to chat, you'll have to excuse me, because I'm a very busy man. Uh, Mr. Foote, Mr. Foote, I don't think we came to order or chat. We came to talk. 
about your building, 914 West 126th Street? Uh, I, 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 I don't know that place. I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh. But, Mr. Foote, sir, I have this information. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, number 914 West 126th Street is owned by the Marichek Corporation. Mm -hmm. The lot is owned by Prozorov and Sons Incorporated, mm -hmm. which is owned in turn by International House of Garlands, which is owned by you. Uh, do I have anything wrong so far? Just, uh, who are you working for? Your tenants. A word to the wise. Tenants who get involved with rent strikes end up spending the winter on the street. <laughs> so then I said, Mr. Let me give you the word. I am spending the winter in my very same old apartment, only this time it is going to be warm for yeah. once. And the sink is going to work good. The ceiling is going to have those holes patched up and the hallways. Honey, we're going to have some light out there. <laughs> and you know what? Everybody in New York City is going to be talking about what Mr. William, Mr. Daniel Foote, that is, did for his tenants. You know how come? Because Mr. This is William Woodard's paper is going to tell him. And also Councilman Ryan, soon to be Senator Ryan to you. You like that? Uh, he didn't like that. <laughs> but on the other hand, uh, you might not get all that publicity. It depends on how fast you get on to doing your job. Now, if you start real soon, maybe Mrs. Woodard and uh, Mr. Ryan will forget all about you. Maybe. And he folded. Well, let's say he's sad. <laughs> but the thing was, was when Pat introduced himself, that did it. He heard it, both of your names. Uh, when I asked him to call and check on us, he felt that wasn't necessary at all, no. Did you get a commitment from him, a date that the work will actually begin? A crew will be at the building by 8 a.m. tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> it's amazing. I just wish I'd been there to watch you in action. Oh, lady, talking was the easy part. The hard part was getting my foot into the right door. And, well, that never would have happened without, well, Nancy and, and Pat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and listen, I do mean to tell all my neighbors this, too, because if those workers show up in the morning, I guarantee they'll be lined up everywhere just dying to shake your hand. They'll show up. They'll show up. The building department will eat Mr. Foot alive. If he <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I bet he has other slum holdings. Yeah. That might be worth looking into. Ah, you know you got some team here. Uh-huh. That's very nice. Well, what do you think? Oh, yes. That's pretty wild, honey. Oh. <laughs> Why'd you come home so soon? Genuine leather. We didn't know how long we were going to stay. <laughs> uh, did, did you get married in that outfit? Well, I'm only asking, Dee. I mean, I don't know the local customs in Las Vegas. Okay, okay. Look, the next time I come here, I'm going to be wearing my wedding dress. But right now, I want to dress all Western, because I, I know little John's going to get a kick out of this. <sighs> Where is he? Yeah, he's at school, darling. Oh, of course he is. Okay, well, I'll show you anyway. I got him. It's an Indian war drum. Uh -huh. Oh, that's very nice. I think it's going to rain. Dave will just love it. Oh, just love it. <laughs> love that, D. That's sweet. Oh. Okay. Oh, also, I got him a cowboy hat. See, I mean, it's made for kids, but it looks like the grown-up ones, and it's got this, it's got this oh. silver band around yeah. here. I think it's great. I mean, he's had a crummy one when he was little, but I think this one is really great. It's going to last forever. It's Woo. a beauty, D. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, I got some other stuff for him, but um, we'll go on to the other things. Yeah, you went a little hat crazy there, didn't you? I went prison crazy. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. This is um, for you, for being such a good brother. And because I always thought you'd look good on a horse. <laughs> oh, honey, oh, come on. You shouldn't have. And uh, wait a second. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, one second, one second. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. I get one too. This is for you. Oh, oh, oh. Me? It's All right. <laughs> so we're in good health. Oh, where's Maeve? Because I know she's a hat freak. And she's at the dentist. Oh, that's too bad. I really have a pretty hat. I want her to try it on. Well, why don't you model it for us? Come on. Oh, no, I couldn't. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, All right, all right. I'll do it, okay. All right. Twist her arm. 
Insufficient venting. Oh, that means that the windows are nail shut. You know, Mr. Foote's way of making up for no lock on the front door. Can you dig it? Now listen to this. Third floor landing unstable. Unstable. <laughs> you must love that one. That's so what you gotta jump over the floorboards, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. See, that's how you keep the calf muscles in shape. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Foote, I know you only do what you think is best for us. We're gonna get you for it now. Oh, you sure are. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm having such a good time. I really hate to stop. But listen, I have taken up more than enough of your time for one morning. And I want to say thank you, Mrs. Wood. Thank you. You just throw my name around any time you need to. Okay. Oh, and thank you so much, Councilman Ryan. It's my pleasure. Yeah, you got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope many others in your district. Well, uh, Pat explained to me that you weren't really the cause of the hospital strike, and I do believe that now. And I, I'm more than happy to, like, throw your name around for, you know, the Senate and all. If, uh, you know, well... If what? Well, if I were sure that uh, you would try to get closer to the people in this community. Well, you can't be serious. Frank is as close to his constituency as any politician in the city. They're practically family. Ethel, you just haven't seen him walk these streets. Now, uh -huh, people... Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen him walk the streets. At least not my streets. And I haven't seen him at my type of meetings. I mean, meetings like uh, the PTA, the Board of Education. I mean, the schools. You're just not involved with the schools, and I really think you should be. You have a point. I do. Well, but Frank would respond if parents brought problems to him. Specific issues. I am sure everybody knows that Frank is eager to help. Listen, they just don't know that, and I differ from you, you know? Your father came here a long time ago, and he bought his bar, and I'm sure he went through a lot of bad times. But to a lot of people, especially folks my age, I mean, Johnny Ryan's uh, the establishment. He's a big, good businessman, and so is his son. And I'm sorry, you just have to do something about it. Any ideas as to what that uh, something might be? Uh, Funny you should ask. Uh, well, tell you the truth, I think you need a task force. Mm -hmm. I think you need to put your, have your people send out feelers into the community. You know, not just in case of emergencies, I mean, mm -hmm. but all the time. To be there, you know, just... Oh, I love it. And I love something else even more. You run the task force. Uh-uh. Why not? You're the natural choice. 
wait, wait, wait. First of all, I have too much going on in my life right now. Oh, it no. wouldn't take any time at all. A few hours a week, you choose a staff. Two, three, four people. Look, basically, all you would be doing is keeping on doing what you're right now. Attend the same meetings, just delegate authority. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You know, you, you're moving too fast. Ethel, it's... you have any trouble telling people what to do? Uh-uh. Yeah, I got that feeling. So fine, you just go ahead and be yourself. <laughs> Frank would benefit from it, and so would you, because there'd be a salary with the job. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Now, if I did decide to help you, Councilman Ryan, mm -hmm. it would uh, have to be as a volunteer. Okay. All right. We start out that way. Deal? Uh, well, let, let me think about it, and I'll tell you what, I'll call you. Uh, soon. <sighs> yeah, uh, listen, I, I, I have to get out of here before ooh, something else crazy happens. Uh, ooh, nice meeting you. <laughs> nice oh, meeting you. But, oh, nice meeting you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thanks okay. a lot. Uh, Oh, come here. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and, um, um, oh, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Listen, I'll be there to see the workers arrive. You ate sharp. But who knows, I might just throw a party. Oh, oh, okay, bye-bye, okay. 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 thank you. Bye -bye. Goodbye. Bye -bye. She'll do it. The task force? Yeah. She could yeah. be a very valuable link in the organization. She's a marvelous woman. Pat and Nancy, I don't know how to thank you for this. Yeah, forget it. Yeah, Jordan. He's oh, busy. put him on right away. We're gonna split. Yeah, Jimmy this Sullivan. How are you? I've had him months. Blessings uh -huh. on you, Dr. Ryan. How's work down there in Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Congratulations. Oh, well, congratulations to you, too. Are my feet touching the ground? Well, let me see. No, but neither are mine. <laughs> Everything's under control here if you two want to go out and celebrate. It's wonderful that you helped Ethel Green. Mm -hmm. Lunch at lunch? Well, how, another day, then. How about Ryan's? Terrific. <laughs> okay. Let's go. I'll see you later, Georgia. Well, you know, we came home because, um, I had to go see my broker. And I had all these gifts that I wanted to give everybody. You know, I hate to wait. I really do. And we saw a lot of shows, and we gambled, and got married. So, uh, where's my toast? Hey. <laughs> it's a good show, right? Okay. Oh, all right, do you realize that this is my first time in Ryan's as Mrs. Roger Coleridge? So, do you have something nice to say? I hear Cedelia, uh... All right, all right, all right. <laughs> A toast to Delia, a little girl who's come a long way, and may her upward trend continue. Oh, <laughs> oh, all right, that's, that's very nice, as well. usual. Uh, uh, that's good. Oh, you know, Dee, uh, I was wondering about Roger in Vegas. How'd that work out? Oh, oh, he loved it. Uh, he really did. Oh, uh, we got married in this uh, this little room. In, in the courthouse, and, and the janitor was the witness, and we'd have a ring. I see Roger was so nervous that he forgot it, but uh, it didn't matter at all, though, because we were so happy about uh, everything that we just cared about each other. Uh, uh, look, look at this. It, this is the ring. We got this from the marriage commission or whatever he is, 398. I, I'm never gonna take this ring off. I think, uh, I think Bobby was talking about the gambling. You know, you know, Roger used to gamble a little bit, you know that. Oh, yeah, well, he likes to play blackjack, and uh, he taught me how to play it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I mean, just as long as it's under control. Look, you just relax and just drink your drink a bit. He told me about Nick Zavo and, and placing money on horses, but that was three or four years ago. That's a long time ago, right? Right. It's just water under the bridge. Yeah, well, let's hope so. Anyway, why should we worry about it now? No. Look at this. Okay. Everybody's got a lot to cheer about. Explain who Fritz Overton is. Mm -hmm. I gotta check on my stew. Yeah, he's supporting Frank, you know. Overton's the type of guy, D. He can oh, really Bobby. put Frank across. Huh? Bobby, you look worried. Do you think Roger's gonna gamble again? Oh, I, I don't know, honey. I mean, I just was. I thought Las Vegas might be a little bit of trouble for him. I and mean, if it wasn't, fine. I didn't mean to scare you. Because he had a problem. Uh oh Yeah. He plays blackjack very well, and he won a lot of money. Right. And, you see, 
I don't want to bet that much money. It's okay, I'll give it to an investment counselor, but it's their responsibility. But when you, you know, a dealer gives you chips and that's your money and then he takes your money away from you, well, that really upsets me. Yeah, but you said Roger won. Yeah, but he agreed that he wouldn't do that anymore. And then the next morning I got up and he was gone and he went to the casino and I went downstairs to the casino and he lost all the money. Bobby, that oh, was $20,000. No. I don't know how much more it was. How did he take that? Oh, he took it fine. I mean, he said he just wanted to keep on going. Uh, do you think, do you think he's addicted? I mean, is that a bad sign? No, no, I think you're pretty smart to come home, though. Well, I gotta do something. I mean, suppose he's gonna start in New York. No, no, I don't think so. No, I think it'll be okay. I think it's a out of sight, out of mind type of thing. Okay, what I'll do is we just won't go back to Las Vegas. Well, you, you better steer clear of Atlantic City, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, stay in New York, and he'll do his surgery, and I'll play the, the, the market, and, uh, Neither one of us will get into gambling again. What if you could change your past? Erica does every week because sometimes the only way to move forward is to go back. A new original primetime drama, Being Erica, Thursdays at 10 on SoapNet.